How many times have you heard these questions as a scrum master? Can we skip the retro this week? I got a lot of work. I'll miss the retro. What are the benefits of a sprint retrospective? Why are we doing the sprint retrospective in the first place? Can we do sprint retrospectives every two or three sprints? If you've answered yes to most of these questions, you might be running in effective sprint retrospectives. Let's get something straight off the bat. I'm not saying that all sprint retrospectives are a waste of time. No, far from that. The idea of continuous improvement the foundation, that's the foundation of agility. But still, most sprint retrospectives, the vast majority of sprint retrospectives, inefficient, ineffective. That's why developers feel that they are wasting their time in sprint retrospective. They prefer working, <laughs> working, coding instead of joining the sprint retrospectives. But don't worry, by the end of this video, you'll know exactly why you might be running ineffective and inefficient sprint retrospectives and what to do about it. But first, what are sprint retrospectives? It all starts with agile principle number 12 at regular intervals. The team reflects on how to become more effective than tunes and adjust its behavior accordingly. Retrospectives in the Scrum framework happen, should happen every single sprint. It's a time to reflect on what we did in the past sprint, the current sprint, what just finished, the sprint that just finished, what went well, and how can we improve in terms of ways of working, processes, the way we communicate with each other, the way we run our team. How can we improve all these things in the next sprint or in future sprints? Here are four things that make your sprint retrospectives bad total waste of time <laughs> number one lack of focus and direction most common culprit most people don't even realize that they are doing that how are most sprint retrospectives done a facilitator usually the scrum master either on site at the office or online will share a board and tell you to write what went well on the board and how can you improve in future sprints? Obviously, there's a lot of questions that can be asked, but the general theme is that reflecting on how the sprint went in terms of what went well and what could be improved. Then the team discuss and build a list of improvement items that they can work on in the future sprints. Yeah, that's it, that's pretty good. Everyone does the sprint retrospectives like that, right? But the problem is that what are you focusing on? Are you solving the right problems right now? Are you solving the right problems? What are these right problems? problems. Remember, effectiveness is all about doing the right things. What are the right things? What are the right problems that you need to focus on right now? Yeah, the team is solving problems, but there's no direction. Everyone is going to random directions. Everyone is solving random problems. There's no focus. And we end up solving problems. Yeah, the team is continuously solving problems, improving, but at the same time, stagnating because there's no focus. Remember, your role as a Scrum Master and Agile Coach, Facilitator, is not only to facilitate the event, the Sprint Retrospective, no, is to also bring focus and ask the right questions. You shouldn't be deciding what the focus is on, what problems you need to fix, no, but you need to ask them, are we going into the right direction? Are we fixing the right problems? A few months back, I was working with a team who wanted to become more predictable. Yeah, predictability, extremely important. So in the next quarter, they decided to have a goal, an objective to reach at least 80% of their commitments every single sprint. 80% of their sprint's commitment by the end of a sprint, every single sprint. So in the sprint retrospectives, I no longer had a board. What went well? What could be improved? No, we had a focus. We had a direction. I simply asked them, what is preventing us from reaching our goal? They already had a goal. They already knew what they wanted to improve and what they had to improve. I simply had to ask them, what is preventing us? What can we do? To reach our goal. And obviously, once we talk about what we can do right now to improve, to progress towards our goal, if we still have time in the sprint retrospective, we can talk about other lower priority improvement items. And talking about improvement items, the second reason why people feel that sprint retrospectives a total waste of time. Improvement items without actual improvement. <laughs> yeah, how many improvement items do you end up with at the end of your sprint retrospectives? How many are done by the end of the next sprint? Two sprints after, three sprints after, how many are done? Do you have clear owners for each one of these items? How do you follow up on these items in the sprint? How do you plan these items? Do you estimate these items, how do you keep each other accountable to ensure that we complete 
these items. Are completing these items a priority for your product owner, for your team, for your company? I know some teams that flood their sprint retrospectives and sprint with tons of improvement items, but by the end of a sprint, nothing is done. Other teams, right focus, right direction, only one to improvement items, but by the end of a sprint, nothing is done. Others, right improvement items, but by the end of a sprint, no one even remembers why we wanted to improve this because the improvement item is not even clear. Writing clear items, prioritize, and having the right focus and direction, only a few items, and completing them every single sprint. What's the priority? for your team. Else, why are you even doing sprint retrospectives? Just ignore the session. If you don't prioritize these sessions, these events in Scrum, stop using Scrum. It's a waste of time. Find something else to use. But if you use Scrum, you need to use it as per the book and complete at least one improvement item every single sprint. And this all starts with a definition of done. Yeah, we use a definition of done for user stories, right? To know when user stories are done. Use the same logic for improvement items. First, write clear and concise improvement items prior to taking the improvement item in the sprint. During the sprint planning, refine it, estimate it. Same thing, same logic as a user story, right? Clear and concise acceptance criteria. So what needs to happen for this user improvement item to be considered done? What needs to happen? What are we trying to achieve? What does success look like? What does failure look like? Who will be working on that? Who is accountable to ensure that this improvement item is completed? What is the priority of this improvement item? What are the tasks? What do we need to do to complete this improvement item? How can we keep each other accountable to ensure that we complete this improvement item? How we will follow up to know if this improvement item is progressing in the spring? There's nothing new here. We are already doing that for user stories. Why not use the same logic for improvement items. Most people don't do that. Doing this simple thing will greatly increase the chance of you completing these improvement items. And remember, the 10 improvement items per sprint, 20 improvement items per sprint. No, one improvement item, maybe two improvement items. The right focus, the right direction, improvement items that match your objectives for the quarter, for the year, going into the right direction. That's it, clear and concise, Follow the same logic as user stories, and there's a high chance that you will do good. <laughs> the third thing that people feel make sprint retrospectives a waste of time. A pool facilitator. When I got my first Scrum Master job, I got training on the Scrum framework on agility, but not really on how to facilitate. Facilitation is easy. Easy to understand. Facilitation simply means making things simpler. But it's not that simple to do. <laughs> it's hard to facilitate correctly. Anyone can facilitate a session, but doing it correctly, hard to master. And you don't really get training for that. Scrum masters and your coaches, they don't get training for that. So you need to train yourself. <laughs> Learn alone. Read books. Take courses. Do certifications. Improve your skills. And you also need to practice. If you're running two weeks sprints and you're only facilitating sprint retrospectives, you're only facilitating two sessions per month, 24 sessions per year. Is that enough to improve your skills? Obviously not. So try to expand. Try to ask people in your company, in other teams, can I facilitate your session? Any meetings that you want me to facilitate? Always find opportunities to practice the skill. The fourth reason why people feel that retrospectives are a waste of time unpreparedness. People coming unprepared to sprint retrospectives. Yeah, that's most people. Just picture this. A sprint retrospective. Everyone comes prepared with charts, with graphs, analytics. They know exactly what to talk about what went well, what can be improved. Everything is documented prior to coming to the session. Past retrospective items are done. They came with the results. Did we succeed? Did we fail? They came prepared to the sprint retrospective. And they are focused. We didn't take too much work in the sprint, so they can really focus during the sprint retrospective. If you're doing it online, their camera is on, their energy is high, they want to improve. They are not checking their emails or coding at the same time. No, they are really focused in the session. That's a dream session. You can have the best facilitator in the world, but if people don't really understand why we are doing sprint retrospectives, there's no direction, there's no focus. Nothing is completed. We simply flood items after items, improvement items, but nothing is completed. They will lose their trust in sprint retrospectives. So start with that first. Once people see that items are being completed, 
energy will increase. Maybe we'll come prepared in the next sprint retrospective. We will focus in the next sprint retrospective. And this will start a snowball effect. Yeah, getting bigger and bigger in terms of trust, in terms of energy, in terms of participation, engagement in the sprint retrospectives. And people will start believing again that sprint retrospectives are a must-have session over sprint. Which brings me to my next point. If you want more tips, insights on agile scrum, personal growth, click on the video that stands out the most on the screen right now. And I'll see you in a few seconds.